Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. How are you all doing? My name is Amanda Ellis and a very warm welcome to my channel. This is complicated, uh, deep, multi-layered, takes some chewing over and I'm going to allow myself and you, the viewer, the opportunity to digest this in your own time, but I'm not going to rush through this meal that is being presented. What the hell is she going on about? The meal is the symbolism, the lessons with regards to the recent developments with RFK Jr. and his alliance with Trump. This video assumes that you have actually watched Robert's speech, all 48 minutes of it. I think it was about 48 minutes. I sat through all 48 minutes live and felt, as I said on the day that I watched it, forever changed. The people that have been coming at me since uh, with regards to what I said, and I'm going to reiterate what I said and read out the initial post, because I think it's a good summary of what I felt the speech encapsulated. But the people that seem to be coming at me particularly are ones that have not watched the speech. And you can say to people as many times as you want, watch the speech. And if you still won't watch the speech, it's a bit like you haven't read the book, you haven't looked at the play. So how can you comment on what we're actually talking about? So assuming you've watched the speech, you're going to get a lot out of this video. I will also link below his full speech in case you haven't seen it. And then you can look at that. But what I say is going to make a lot more sense if you've seen it, okay? When I was watching it live on Twitter, as I still call it, on Friday night, was it? Whenever it was happening, uh, there were two million people watching with me. It was broadcast on all of his social media channels, including YouTube. It was run for a period of time on mainstream media until he started to talk about things that they deemed off script. In particular, um, the food industry, censorship of the press, etc. But a lot of people saw it. And the first thing I want to say, and this video is going to get to observations, intuitive hits that I've received in the, the days that have followed. I also have, a, I feel as though I've got a good energetic link with Robert. I tuned into him over a year ago. I did a video called One Moment in Time, where I said that there was going to be one moment in time where he was going to say something which would make people stop, reconsider, and it was, it was going to be a very, very powerful moment that changed everything. I couldn't see what that was. But as I was listening to the speech a few days ago, I realized that that was what I had been picking up. Um, I always saw him and still do as a powerful player here to do great things. And in many ways, what's happening now, and this seems a strange thing to say, but almost feels as though it's above politics. Let me let me reiterate, actually, and rephrase that. It's above party politics. So some of the things in particular that are being um, discussed and forced into the highlight, forced into the spotlight, rather, by Robert, are things such as uh, childhood illnesses, um, the food industry needing to be regulated, ending the war in Ukraine, and also taking on pharmaceutical pharmaceutical industries as well. Those were aspects that united him with Donald Trump. So, yeah, this feels as though it is a moment where we are being given a glimpse of what unity looks like. And indeed, Robert talked about a unity party in his speech. And the first thing that I want to say before we really get going into this video is that you need to appreciate that unity never looks like you think it's going to look. We have a kumbaya type 
image sometimes in our head of what unity is going to look like. And it never looks like that in reality. Uh, I've spoken many times about the Northern Ireland peace process and the figures that got around the table all those years ago, including leading members of the IRA who had maimed and killed many hundreds of people, um, etc. But were invited to the table and peace was achieved. Unity was achieved. Something incredible was achieved. And in fact, I did want to just show one photograph um, that I think is worth re-remembering, this one here, of the late Queen shaking the hand of Martin McGuinness here, who was certainly a very prominent member of the IRA. Some say he was pretty much the ringmaster of it. But shaking the hands there, and interestingly, whatever you think of the Queen, she was always very good with choosing colour. I'm a colour therapist, if you don't know. Green is the colour of hope and new beginnings. And actually, I've realised I've worn it today subconsciously without even realising. Green is the colour of hope and new beginnings. And she was shaking the hand there of a man who certainly was central to or had led an organisation that was responsible for the death of her cousin, who had been blown up in an IRA bomb years previously. So we don't need to get into all the ins and outs of the Queen and all of that. But it's just, again, one of those moments in time whereby... You have to put differences aside and think about the future. So these three things that Robert is highlighting, um, childhood illness, um, ending the war in Ukraine, and yes, there are other wars around the world, and we want to see a ceasefire in Gaza as well, but you have to start somewhere with war. And he's starting there for whatever reason. Uh, and also, as I say, taking on, um, also standing up very much for freedom of speech, that was one of the other key aspects, are really important for the future projection of our world, not just USA. Although it's interesting hearing him talk because maybe many, maybe many Americans are not realizing what he actually said and the wisdom that he imparted with regards to the huge number of additives and chemicals in a lot of American food that is actually banned, for example, where I live in Europe. Well, no, I'm not in Europe anymore, in Europe and in UK, in other parts of the world. So, um, anyway, so what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to be giving an opinion uh, and insight with regards to the speech, pulling out the symbolism of it. Uh, I want to, I'm also going to be using some cards. I'm going to be tapping into spirit. I'm also going to be pulling in some aspects from his late father that, he, that um, Robert Kennedy himself said, Bobby Kennedy said. And we'll just see how this develops, okay? So I also want to weave in the Camelot energy. I've been doing a lot of work recently on the return of Camelot, which is a multinational thing. It's, it's a global thing. And there was a video oh, I did on Robert a few months ago where I talked about the Camelot link with him. Um, so again, I will put that below. And if you haven't, if you're new to my channel, and many of you are, you can watch some of the other work that I've done on this man. Okay. So um, let's start then with what I said immediately having watched that speech on Friday. So this was literally within half an hour of watching it. This is what I came from my heart and I wanted to say, and it's a good starting point. So I said, uh, 1.8 million watching on X alone. Never in my wildest dreams did I envisage a speech as powerful and emotional as that. No teleprompter in sight. That was from the heart and the intellect. Robert's tears for the children, because he did have tears, were all our tears willing to go against his closest partner's wishes and his family's denouncements to fight for what he believes is worth his last 10 years of meaningful career. He meant every word of that. Freedom of speech, ending war, taking on the corrupt food and pharmaceutical industries is worth his personal differences with Donald Trump to create what he called a unity party. 
He says that he reached out to Kamala too, but wasn't granted any entrance to talks or even a phone call with her. He talked of unity and the travesty of USA being bottom of the world's table for, child for childhood health. He named causes and he gave solutions. As I understand it, he is pulling out of places where his vote could create a democratic win by splitting the vote. And he's staying on the ballot where his supporters can still mark an X for him without harming a Republican win. <clears throat> he talked of the very real and big differences of opinion that he has with Donald Trump. His voice cracking with emotion and you could see that this olive branch of unity was very hard. But he also spoke of the areas where they agree. And for him, three areas of agreement are key. Stopping the war in Ukraine, improving children's ill health, and standing up for free speech. Two standout lines were, they don't fear lies, they fear the truth. And we need to choose to love our children more than we hate each other. Make America healthy again was also said a few times. That was one moment and a speech that will echo down the ages regards where democracy has failed, where control has strangled health and freedom and where a line in the sand was drawn. 1.8 million, Robert, heard you. Not the manipulated spun lies from MSM that will undoubtedly follow. We don't care. We heard the actual words and the nuance from you, not them. Seeds are sown. And he said that this for him is a spiritual journey and he has prayed deeply on what to do. Well done. So that was what I felt. And it was interesting that I talked about the fact that I was so glad that I'd heard it from the horse's mouth, as it were, I'd actually heard him live, word for word, hadn't been cut off where I was watching it in UK, although I know it was cut off in places in America. I watched the full speech. And uh, the next day went to the media here, for example, in the UK. They didn't run any, the, the papers I was looking at, didn't run a single story on it, certainly did not print the full transcript of the speech or even a, a substantial part of it. What they did instead was go straight into character assassination with regards to his well documented from him as well, uh, drug uh, abuse past. And that to me said everything. The fact that they couldn't even acknowledge what I had felt and millions of you had also felt, um, which was a significant shift whether he becomes part of what will be the next government or not, make no mistake about it. That was a fundamental moment, which was about a huge wake up call, particularly for America, but the world also with regards to freedom of speech, um, but also significant American problems with regards to childhood illness, for example, and everything that he said. And those with ears to really listen and spend the time to listen would have got something out of it. Uh, he also talked in depth, obviously, about the way that the Democratic Party had tried to thwart him at every single turn and that he had tried every avenue before realising that there was no path to power and his only way to be able to get his message across and fulfil his lifetime's work, which is particularly for the children, was to form some form of unity alliance with another. And as I say, he reached out to both sides and it was only Trump that was willing to talk to him. Uh, interestingly, I've seen an a interview subsequent to that speech uh, over, uh, over the weekend where he's talking about the fact that the initial phone call with Donald Trump came just after um, Trump's uh, you know, near assassination, which again for him was a moment which was, I believe, life changing. Uh, doesn't mean he's suddenly a walk in and he's a completely different person, but there is a more mellow side to him coming out. And I think as spiritual beings, and if you're following my channel, you're a spiritual being, we have to acknowledge that there are opportunities for transformation and change for every single person on this planet 
on any day. And we can't always hang on to a past idea of who somebody was or what they've done. We have to deal with the present version of, of them. Doesn't mean you have to like that, of course, but I, I think that is important to say as well. And I will just say one thing here with regards to Donald Trump, because this is more going to be about RFK, this video, but it's just an observation. Um, I th There's an interview that's doing the rounds where Trump sat down with some influencer. Um, let me find it, because actually I sent a segment of, of it to my father, um, who isn't, you know, a Trump fan by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think, I can't speak for him, but I think he is. Um, but it was the one where Trump is speaking about um, his brother's addiction. And what is the guy called that he's interviewing him? Uh, Theo... Theo Vaughn. <laughs> I'm so old, I don't know who Theo Vaughn is, but anyway, Theo Vaughn, and uh, it's a nine minute segment from that interview where Donald Trump is talking about addiction and sobriety and what he learned from his brother's um, descent into alcoholism. And I thought it was a very, very poignant uh, interview. And I, 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 I really felt the softness basically coming from Donald Trump in that moment and the honesty and the authenticity where he was talking about um, his brother's battle and also what he'd learned from that. And then there's just this beautiful bit at the end of the interview where, I don't know, they're just sort of saying goodbye and he's wishing him well or something. And he... Donald says something to this guy who's a who's a recovered alcoholic and drug addict, I believe. And he just said something like, you've got this, you can do it. I, I believe in you. It's that type of energy. And um, yeah, I sent it to my dad because my dad's fought alcoholism as well and, and has succeeded. And I just thought he gets it. Donald gets it, you know, that fight with that particular thing and because he's seen it in his own family. So it's just an example of something where I thought, well, I'm seeing a different side to you that I haven't seen before. And I will also say, if you're new to me, I've never been one of those uh, YouTubers who four years ago jumped on the Trump bandwagon. You know that. If you look back, you know I didn't. Uh, never been into QAnon or anything like that. Um, I've always tried to stay very middle of the road because my politics is middle of the road, to be perfectly honest. If anything, it's a little bit middle right, but I can sway either way, dependent on policy or the person, you know, that is there to vote for. Um, but I've never been a huge Trump fan, I have to be honest. But I do know in my own personal life now, three people who have been over the last four years completely anti this guy to the point of, in a couple of cases, near obsession. You know, look what he's done now. Look what he said now. What an idiot who all have looked me in the eye and said, do you know what? I think if he doesn't win, the world is in trouble. And I'm not saying that to try and change your opinion of him or anything. I'm just reporting on energies because I'm like, wow, I didn't expect you of all people to take that stance or to feel like that. Um, and it feels as though it means something. So, you know, if you've watched my videos on American politics over the last few months, I've talked about the uh, the analogy of the motor race and the pit stop. And most of you get what I'm trying to say, which is that the run up to November the 5th, it's like a motor race and the opponents, they're going to have moments where they're in the lead and then the other one will lag behind. But then, you know, they can take the curve and then they the, the, the one that was losing suddenly takes the lead again. Um gains the momentum and it's going to keep changing and I genuinely feel I agree with what David Palmer said the Leo King I was watching one of his uh, broadcasts over the weekend and there was a point where he was asked so do you think Trump's going to win and he said it, 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 I won't put words into David's mouth what he's effectively saying and I agree with this is that it, you can't call it yet you can't call it uh, it just feels too close to call. So the wise man or woman basically just observes these things that are happening, the RFK speech and alliance being the latest development of the race, observes it, looks at it, um, can have your own personal reaction to it, um, but realise that the race is not over, okay? Okay. I'm not going to pull cards today on Tim Waltz and Kamala Harris. I did pull some off camera last night. And the one thing I will just say, um, just out of fairness to them, is 
that there are some slightly strange cards there as well, because the point is there's very strange energies on both sides here. There are things that could happen with regards to RFK and Donald Trump, which are wild card energies, some of them not so good, some of them good, and the same can apply for the other camp as well. But when I pulled cards on Kamala and Tim last night, I was getting this energy of the tower falling for Kamala. Um, her, the, what, the energy around her did not look so good. And I was quite surprised, but the energy around Tim looked quite strong last night. Um, he was coming out very much in his Aryan energy. I believe he is an Aries, uh, very emperor type energy. And I always try to be open-minded when I'm reading cards. And I was quite surprised by the strength of the energy around Tim, um, just in terms of where he was at. Also considerable pressure around him. It felt like he was buckling a little bit under the spotlight. But um, his cards looked better than hers, which were, was just really interesting and a bit odd. So I didn't quite understand what the tower energy was around her potentially coming in. It was shrouded um, via, with the high priestess and there was also a death card there as well. So I know some people are speculating that she might still be replaced. I would actually say that nothing is off the table for either side right now. Um, and that's what I mean by the motor race. Okay. So I am literally just reporting in this video on this lap. Okay. So let's get back to RFK. Um, Actually, I would like to go back one generation and I'd like to just mention his father, um, Bobby Kennedy, Robert Kennedy. Now, I'm of the age where I don't really remember him at all, I have to be honest, but and I haven't channeled him. It might be a good idea to do that soon. I've channeled JFK, haven't cha channeled RFK. But there are two stories I'd like to tell you. Uh, one is a story that RFK Jr., recounts about a book that his father gave him a few weeks before he died. But And the other one is a quote from Robert himself. Let's start with the quote, shall we? So this is RFK's father. And I tell you what, you know, his family disowning him or, you know, certainly being pretty vile. And I'll come to that in a moment as well. But he looks so much like his father. So it's really quite interesting. That looks so much like a young... Um, RFK Jr. Well, that's actually the father. But this quote I just found by chance yesterday and I thought it was so perfect for where we all are um, with regards to trying to get to unity. So this was said however many years ago. This is what Robert said. He says, when you teach a man to hate and fear his brother, when you teach that he is a lesser man because of his colour or his beliefs or the policies he pursues, when you teach that those who differ from you threaten your freedom or your job or your family, then you also learn to confront others, not as fellow citizens, but as enemies. We must admit the vanity of our false distinctions among men and learn to find our own advancement in the search for the advancement of all. We must admit in ourselves that our own children's future cannot be built on the misfortune of others. And we must recognise that this short life can neither be enabled nor enriched by hatred or revenge. What a powerful, it, it, I just really feel his power. And as I say, it, I'm, I'm sad that I don't know much about him. I know some of you who watch me from America will remember him in his prime and also his assassination. But uh, anyhow, he, he sort of lives on through his son. And I, I will say that I feel a sense of pride from him to Robert now living. Um, and before we get to the book, actually, that he gave uh, RFK Jr., I will just say this about the family coming out very quickly, some members of the family coming out very quickly, the Kennedy family, and basically, you know, um, dissing uh, Robert's stance now. And in many ways, it felt very bitter, very spiteful, very hurtful. You know, you can agree to disagree, but you don't have to publicly come out and shame somebody. Effectively, they were sort of saying he was shaming the Kennedy name. Um, and there's a few things I've written down here. Number one, the black sheep in the family is often the one that actually leads the way. 
Think about your own family, okay? The black sheep leads the way. Um, what do I mean by that? It's this energy of not moving with the times, basically. Um, if we take it away from the Kennedy family now and just think about family generally, it's when you're born into a family and things have to be a certain way and you have to believe a certain thing and you have to do as we say and you have to go into the family business and you can't step out of line and you can't have your own identity and you just have to keep doing what we've always done in the family because that's what we do because our name is whatever. We are in times, my friends, where we've got star seeds coming into families and this has been happening for many generations of course and they're coming in with the express purpose of actually bringing change into the families that they're born into whoever they are whether they're the kennedys or whether they're joe blogs down the road and i will show you one card that i got last night for robert I wanted to pull this on camera. I'm sorry. I'm just going to be honest. I got too nosy and too curious <laughs> because I knew I wanted to use the Citadel deck. And Metatron was like, pull them on camera, Amanda. And I'm like, yeah, but I want to see now. So I did pull it off camera, but I'm just going to show you because I was like, oh, wow. And then it was like, you see, wouldn't that be more powerful if you'd pulled it on camera? But anyway, those of you who know me, you know, I'm not fixing this. It's just such an amazing card. The card is this. This is Robert's card, RFK Jr.'s card. So what I said was, what is the archetypal energy that Robert is holding now? And we have the card of the guide and it says inheritance and correction, inheritance and correction. Now, let me just read you what it also says. Um, it says beneath the thundering echo of a waterfall, a bell rings clear and compelling, commanding the attention of all close enough to hear. Almost without thinking, you feel your feet turn you towards the waters and the figures beneath. The guide has inherited their position and the path they walk has been predetermined. It is their role to correct the mistakes made by their predecessor and set things to right. You are in a situation, remember this is him, that isn't ideal, but it's up to you to make the most of it. Holding a grudge against what led you here won't achieve anything. It's time to accept the cards you've been dealt once you're on the other side of this, you'll be better placed to reflect on what you've learned from the experience. But for now, it's time to put in some hard work and push through. So, yeah, he's it's this is predestined. This is an inherited position. He's meant to be doing what he's doing within his family. So shame on his family for for not supporting him. And again, the interview I saw with him you know, yesterday or whenever, post the speech, he's actually asked outright, how do you feel about your family saying what they're saying about you? And I wrote down his reply. What was his reply? reply? He basically just said, so magnam magnanimous, so dignified. He says, we all need to be able to disagree, but still love each other. And I just thought, wow, how beautiful is that? So again, we can learn things from that with regards to our own family, that we're not always going to agree with each other. Um, maybe we're not meant to. Maybe we're meant to have a different perspective. Maybe we're meant to steer the family line down a different pathway that nobody else in the family can see apart from the one that is doing it. Okay. So that was that. Now let's get to this book and then we'll do some cards and stuff. Um, I also want to talk about um, JD Vance as well and uh, the three alpha males that we've now got, <laughs> which is quite something. Uh, right. So this is RFK Jr. we're talking about. Okay. So this is him talking about a book that his father gave him a few weeks before he died. So he said, um, he, his, his father gave him the book two weeks before he died um, and he read the book multiple times trying to figure out what lessons his dad wanted to give him. Um, so here is what he said. Camus had written this book called The Plague. My father gave it to me and he told me with this kind of peculiar intensity, I want you to read this. He said this with this directness. And after he died, I ended up reading that book about three times, trying to figure out kind of what the message was that he was trying to give me. The breakdown of the book is this. The plague 
is set in a North African city hit by an unprecedented plague. The city is quarantined and the story begins with a focus on the doctor's internal conflict. The doctor initially considers not helping because there is no treatment for the unknown disease. But despite the risks, the doctor decides to comfort and serves the people. Um, Camus, who, who I believe is the writer of the book, is basically talking about stoicism and the focus on duty and service. Um, and that happiness comes from fulfilling duty. Um, and then it also talks about as I say, I haven't read the book, so this is all going a little bit above me, but it says here, um, the doctor's actions bring order to the chaos, reflecting Stoic philosophy. RFK then discussed Sisyphus, a figure in Stoicism, who is happy despite his eternal, futile task. Sif Sisyphus, happiness, comes from fulfilling his duty, protecting people from a rolling stone, regardless of the outcome. For eternity, he pushes a rock up a hill. He can never get it over the top. It always rolls back down and on top of him. And then he goes up and he does it again, RFK says. Syphysis is a happy man, though, because he puts his shoulder to the stone. He was given a duty and he does his duty. And that self-sacrifice that he makes brings order to a chaotic universe. Uh, and then RFK says, so for me to have a kind of concrete task that I, that I know is right and I'm open to criticism, I have a critical mind. If somebody shows me where I got it wrong, I'll change. I'm not dug in. I'm not hard headed in that sense. But until somebody shows me that I'm that, but until somebody shows me that I'm going to try to help these children. And, you know, I feel it's like a gift. So the more people that abuse me, the bigger the gift is in some way. That's deep, guys. Let's just have a breath to just take that in. So I'm telling you these things because I want us to get an understanding of the, the, the character and the energy around him and the things that drive him. It's very easy to attack him for things that he's done in the past and the skeletons in the cupboard that he's clearly shown are there. Um, but true character that underlies everything and that triumphs over everything is what if essentially I'm, I'm interested in. Right. Where do I go now? Before we do some cards, the other couple of things that I got was, if you follow me, you know I often get songs. <clears throat> Spirit gives me songs. I don't know why. It's just one of the ways that they speak through me or speak to me rather. And I was thinking about him and I was in the gym. I said, give me a song for RFK. What, what is the message? I often do that. And I got this song. It's a great song. It's ABBA. Um, Don't Shut Me Down. I think it's called Don't Shut Me Down. So it's all about the speech. Um, but th th these couple of chorus, these couple of verses are so interesting if you think about where he is now, and a lot of people are like, what? Who is he? Or what's he doing? I don't understand it. Um, and wasn't he this? And now he wants to be that. Listen to this, these verses. This is Abba. Don't shut me down. I believe it would be fair to say you look bewildered and you wonder why I'm here today. And so you should. I would. When I left, I felt I've had enough. But in the shape and form I appear now, I have learned to cope and love and hope is why I am here now. And now you see another me. I've been relo reloaded, yeah. I'm fired up, don't shut me down. I'm like a dream within a dream that's been decoded. I'm fired up, I'm hot, don't shut me down. I'm not the one you knew. I'm now and then combined. And I'm asking you to have an open mind. 
it's really, really interesting, isn't it? The past and present combined to not shut me down and to have an open mind. He's trying to open up the minds of America to so many things. And before I forget to say this, a very important part of our job as light workers, and I would say this for anybody, to be honest, um, whether I agreed with them or I don't agree with them. I do like RFK and I've said that before. Um, but protection, spiritual protection. Everybody, whatever your politics is, should be safe to be able to say what they wish to say. Uh, and if you think about the, I think it's trillions of dollars actually linked into the industries that he's trying to bring new regulation into and accountability into, whether that be uh, pharmaceuticals, whether it be um, food, he's a big threat. And I did, he was talking about the fact, again, I'm referencing an interview I saw yesterday. And this is, a, again, a very, very um, poignant quote, really, and sad. It's, he said, the most profitable thing in the USA right now is a sick child. Um, he talked about the fact that his father, when he was um, alive, 6% of Americans had some form of chronic disease. Now it's 60%. And he's talking about taking on the FDA. The, is that the food regulation people? Um, he says that 75% of their money is coming from the pharmaceuticals. So pharmaceutical industry. Yeah. So, yeah, the most profitable thing in the USA right now is a sick child. Um, we don't like to face the darkness in our world and the fact that what we think are apparatus and structures to protect us and keep us safe are actually doing the opposite uh, or certainly lining the pockets of others who are becoming very rich off sickness and disease and war, of course. War being the other one. Um, war is a moneymaker. So to want to end war, even in one place, is a huge deal to many people. So make no mistake, he's got a target on his back. I have read, and I don't know whether this is true, I would hope it's not, but I read that um, the Secret Service protection has just been taken away from him after this speech. Um, if that's true, that's terrible. But and again, we can we can send protection. I actually think both Trump and RFK Jr. need protection. I would also say that Kamala needs protection as well, actually. So um, I also feel there's a, a, a slight threat over her. I'm just picking up something strange around her. And I, I really don't know what it is. I'm not being shown it. So I'm not even going to try to hypothesize what that is. I'm spirit are not telling me. But I am feeling as though there is a, uh, a dark cloud hovering over her as well. So sending protection to her as well. But, you know, RFK Jr. and uh, in particular is has been very vocal about taking down some uh, or not taking down restructuring and changing organisations. And there'll be many people that will be losing money as a result of that. So, you know, please uh, ask Archangel Michael to be with him. OK. Um, okay, I think that is all I wanted to say. I'm going to go to the cards now. I also, you know, freedom of speech has been a big tenant of what he's talking about. Um, can we also just spend a moment to think about Pavel Durov, who was arrested in France last night? If you don't know who he is, he was the founder of Telegram app. I'm not personally on Telegram myself, but I know a lot of um, people are on Telegram who can't, who don't have freedom of speech on other platforms. So uh, he was arrested in France and uh, let's hope he's not the new Julian Assange. Um, but uh, Pavel Durov, I must admit, I'd not really heard of much about him before, but I'll show you what he looks like and then you can send your prayers to him as well. That's what he looks like. So something out of a James Bond movie. <laughs> but I shouldn't laugh really because it's a very serious situation. And those of you that have been with me a long time, you know that I, for years, championed the uh, case of Julian Assange. So it may very well be that we have to turn our attention to this guy. Um, but that will be for another video. But for now, let's just uh, send our send our light and protection to him and and because so, this is about freedom of speech it's just an essential component of what it 
is to lead a happy life. And I think many people, I don't think it's you that are watching me, but I think there's a lot of people out there just are not aware of the erosion of freedom of speech and the censorship that is out there. Uh, I'm speaking from the UK where it's being eroded daily here. Very, very worrying times in the UK. You might have seen that if you're in other countries, but it's not just, of course, a UK thing. Um, we really do need to stand up for it and uh, uh, and just be a little bit brave and a bit courageous in the same way that RFK has been uh, brave and courageous. Well, that was the other thing I, I was really wanting to be say to you and was led to say to you. This thing about one man coming in to affect change. So let's just take, for example, something like the food industry. Uh, one of the things that he was talking about was seed oils in food. Now, I only very recently started to understand about seed oils and actually it was through Dr. Eric Berg, who I've been following for a while now on my health, I don't want to say kick because it's for life, my new regime trying to be a bit healthier. And Dr. Eric Berg was the one who opened my eyes to seed oils and I was like, I don't even know what you're going on about. And then you look in your cupboard and you realise how many products have got are made with um, seed oils. So this includes things like rapeseed oil, for example, but any seed is, you know, seed oil. Um, and they are linked to so many health problems, so many health problems. I mean, you can look at Dr. Eric Berg for information on that as well. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that RFK Jr., as an example, can be somebody who comes in with a lantern to expose this, to show that this is this needs changing, that this is affecting our children's health um, big time. You know, that's just one aspect. But if we keep buying the products that might still have those things in, then we are not helping the change to come in. So what I'm really trying to say is that somebody, whoever they are, can only... You, what's it saying? You, you can't lead a horse to water. You, you can highlight an area of concern. But if you want to keep or, you know, stuffing your face with seed oils and fat and sugar and and the, the highly processed foods with all the additives and knowing that it's going to lead down a certain path, then there isn't much that can be done, really. I do think that uh, this is just me off the top of my head now, but it was something I was saying to John last night. I think it would have to be backed up with substantial um, incentives for people to buy fresh, fresher food as well, because we're in a cost of living crisis. And I appreciate that sometimes people are buying foods with all of these additives in because they're the cheaper foods. So really what we're talking about is a food revolution. We're talking about a total restructuring of the food industry. Um, how it's made, what's in it, but equally that has to be backed up by the consumer then turning to it. Um, so these are these are just huge subjects and uh, it's going to take a while to arrive. Whether he gets into power or not, he has sown the seed, excuse the pun. <laughs> right. Okay, let's get to some cards and I want to pull some cards linked into the whole Camelot energy with RFK. I don't think I've still got the picture, but do you remember that one I showed you of him dressed up? He looked a bit like uh, King Arthur with the sword. Um, I don't think I've still got it. Anyway, let me keep going, otherwise I break my flow. So we're going to pull some cards on the Camelot thing. But more than anything, I'd quite like to pull some cards on the three, I want to say the three amigos. I mean, it's just my sense of humour, sorry. But, you know, it's like Trump, Vance and Kennedy. The first thing that strikes me about these three men is you've got three very strong alpha males. Um... Metatron's making me laugh now as well because he's not being political here but he's got a sense of humour Metatron he tries to keep it light you know the AAA batteries <laughs> maybe you don't have them in your country AAA batteries you know it's just like it's a power pack um uh I'm now being shown yeah those AAA batteries lighting up whether it's a torch a beacon whatever lighting up the world um but yeah this thing about three alpha males now it's slightly strange for me because I have always seen, I'm just reaching for some cards, I've always seen, particularly RFK, I've surrounded by women. 
Uh, I'm talking about energetically, a lot of feminine energy. Now, of course, he had as his running mate uh, a lady. Uh, he's obviously got a wife. Um, he's got a daughter or maybe more, more than one daughter. So there are women in his life. I don't know whether it's just the female vote that I'm picking up. And I've said this before. Maybe it's just the female vote. But it's, it's just, I don't, it feels as though there is a feminine energy around him. Uh, I have seen stuff talking about the fact that uh, there are some powerful women who are going to come forward to help the Trump campaign. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard would be one. So maybe it's that. But uh, yeah, I'm just struck by these three alpha males. You know, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I mean, what could possibly go wrong is a lot of ego. OK, so uh, alpha males by nature like to lead, like to be in charge. So if you've got three trying to lead, um, it can be a disaster or it can be breaking a new paradigm to show what can happen. I, I really just don't know. But, you know, I'm I'm sure that certainly RFK Jr. knew what he was walking into. So he's, it's one thing he's not is an idiot. So, right, let's see. I'm going to pull some extra cards, actually. Let's go to this archetypal deck again. And I'm going to reshuffle the cards. I have got some out. I'll show you what they are, but I'm going to reshuffle them. Because uh, I don't think I put... Oh, no, I did pull. I did pull one for Vance, actually. OK, yeah, let me show you what I've got. But then I'm going to put the cards back in and see what we get today. I did pull one for Trump last night. I got the king. OK, um, interestingly, though, in this deck, the king, um, I'll just read you what it says, because although it's a good card, it's also a card which is a king who needs to learn humility and who learns, who needs to um a degree of humbleness. Let me just read you what it says. So the card for Trump was the king. It says control and reversal of fortune. It says the cheering of the crowd is deafening. Rose petals drift through the air, brushing against the king's gleaming armor, armor as they ride ahead of the parade atop a pristine white horse. They sit proud and indomitable, unaware that the unaware that the moment their fate changes, they may not be so prepared to handle a shift in fortunes. Power, celebration, honours. From a young age, the king has always found that things come easily to them. But there is a catch to being a gifted child. They have never learned the value of hard work. I think Trump does work hard, to be fair. But anyway, hear it out. And therein lies their downfall. The king is a reminder that taking things for granted can cause irreparable mistakes. Now is the ideal time to practice awareness and value the benefits that come from working at a problem, even if you think you already know the answer. Don't dismiss the wisdom of those who try to show you a new way of working out a solution. So do you not think that's really interesting with this other card for RFK, which is the guide? So Trump has to listen to Robert, basically. And if he doesn't, he's a fool, to be perfectly honest. He needs to listen to he needs him. Um, you might say that Robert needs Trump as well, but I'm reading on the king at the moment. The king needs to listen to the guide. So Robert is the guide. Now, I pulled one for J.D. Vance. Have to say, a bit like Tim Waltz. It's interesting, both waltz and, uh, is it waltz or is it waltz? I, f I feel I want to say waltz as in dance, but anyway, um, whatever you say his name doesn't, well, it does matter, but for the purposes of this video, let's not get hung up on just that one thing. Uh, there's much more important things to talk about. The thing I'm trying to say is that I can't quite get a handle on either of them. It's like, I can't quite get a handle on Vance. I can't read him. And I find it hard to read Waltz as well. I really do. But anyway, the card I got for J.D. Vance yesterday is this one. It's the Adventurer. And it's got a volcano about to blow, is the first thing to say. But it says responsibility and expectations. But it's that thing about the adventure. It's like I'm, I'm here for the ride type thing. Uh, I'm here for the rodeo. Uh, that's what it feels like. I'm being shown a rodeo now. Back to my days where I used to love watching Dallas and... Um, was that oh, God, I'm just being shown a scene probably from Dallas whether it was Bobby or JR and they're on the bucking bronco maybe the scene never actually happened maybe it's just in my vivid imagination I don't know but no in all seriousness I'm being shown a scene Bro a bucking bronco and it's like how long can you stay on the bucking bronco without being kicked off I mean I realize what I'm saying now I realize what I'm saying 
he's on the bucking bronco is this the ticket can he stay on the ticket is something going to blow now you know there is this thing about will trump replace trump vance with rfk jr um it could happen but i don't really see that happening because i think it could happen anything's possible to be perfectly honest but I've got an itchy nose here. Um, sorry, when I get an itchy nose, I'm onto something. But I don't know, it just feels unlikely. But I'll pull a card on it. It's kind of a... But I'm not going to commit to whatever comes out in the card because the card is one tool. But I'm, I'm, I'm also going on my gut. I can't quite feel it. But I think RFK stays his own man all the way through. Would RFK replace Vance as VP on the ticket? Mm, we've got a, we've got the Five of Swords. It's interesting. The Five of Swords has got three men. See that? We've also got the card of Judgment. Um. question is which one of those men is Robert which one of those is Trump which one of those is JD Vance I'm just going to pull a tarot card for JD Vance there's a volatility to JD Vance that I'm picking up which I think that's him. I think that's that's JD Vance. I don't think that's Robert. I don't think that's Trump. It's going to be a battle of the alpha males, isn't it? And I think that maybe it's because Vance is a younger man than Robert and Donald. But they don't strike me as two that would just be allowed to be walked over by a younger usurper. But this is just mindset. I feel as though in JD Vance's mind, he'd quite like to... He, he, he feels like he's the king. Got the star card for him. Stars are aligned for J.D. Vance. But I'm still finding it hard to read him, even though I've just said a few things. What else is there to say? J.D. Vance. Six of Wands, victory. With the Two of Cups. Don't know. At the moment, he's just on an adventure. I just want to, that's why I'm seeing him. He's on an adventure. He's on the Bucking Bronco. He's quite enjoying himself. He's enjoying himself. He's having the time of his life. Um, He's almost waiting for it all to blow, to claim the prize. This is win at all costs. He's got the star card, which is a good card. It's a card, that's his dream. That's his, oh, his dream is victory. But it's interesting. His dream of victory, there's not three men there, or even two. There's just one holding the sword. And I don't think it's Trump doesn't mean I don't think Trump's the one. It just means that he wants to win. He he wants to win for himself is what I'm feeling. He's not, a, I don't feel he's a team player. He's not a team player. Yeah, he's playing for himself. He is playing for himself. Um, could it be that he does something that causes the volcano to blow in that he steps out of line? Because I can't believe that, you know, Trump would be that happy with uh, somebody trying to assert his position. Fireworks ahead, I tell you. Okay, right, anyway. So that was, yeah, that was Vance, the adventurer. Last night I also pulled, and then I'm going to pull some fresh card. I just said, show me the energy of the winner. November the 5th, after, afterwards, show me the energy of the winner. I wasn't expecting to get a name, but I did get these two cards, which are interesting. Number one, we have the scholar, investigation and research. That did feel a bit RFK because he is a researcher. But we've also got the aspirant, um, ambition, diligence and setbacks. The scholar, obviously, it's somebody who writes a lot. 
somebody who writes a lot it doesn't I mean, that just made me feel like it's Robert but I mean I know that's probably not it's not possible because he's not running for the presidency but maybe he's just in the government if Trump were to win I don't know I don't know as as David said Leo King said it is too early to really predict but I'm this is just the energy right now and I'll come back to it let's put these cards back into the deck and I'm going to reshuffle so I shuffle on camera and let's give them a good shuffle and see because remember each person including you has got many different aspects to their personality so this deck the citadel is basically saying it's asking about the archetypal energy that's coming through but it's a bit like the mirror ball i always talk about the mirror ball there are different aspects to all of us so um let me just see who i want to ask about first let's just give them a good shuffle firstly uh, I'm going to pull one card for Robert again and one card for Trump. I'm going to start with Robert. Show me a card for Robert. We've got the dancer. We've got, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we've got self-expression and strength. Self-expression and strength. And interesting, of course, because he is somebody who struggles with expression in one way because of his voice, but equally is actually one of the most articulate people on the world stage the paradox of that so we have the dancer and self-expression of strength that that to me is somebody who he knows the right moves to make okay when when the um i'm being shown the analogy of like a, a jukebox so when a new song comes on he's able to adapt his dance what is his dance his dance is his moves not physical dance it's how he operates how he responds he's able to respond to any new tune um it's as though okay we're going to throw this at you we're going to throw that at you we're going to say this about you we're going to say that about you this has happened that's happened well how are you going to deal with that and he'll have an answer for it he'll ha he's quite slick quite slick smooth operator um so he will always have something to say in any pretty much to anything that's lobbed his way um he knows how to dance with life as well i'm hearing and i'm also hearing uh the analogy of life as a, a um like a grand orchestration a symphony he is building to uh the a, a crescendo moment um and that doesn't mean it's over after november i'm talking about the the, ne the next decade he talked about this in his own speech he said i've got eight years he was talking about politics two more governments to come you know these are these are the years that i can make a difference i have to do something with these next eight years the, the decade to come so this next decade is the um uh, yeah, is, is building basically to uh, a climax, to a, um, everything that he's put his time and energy in up to this point in time uh, through his life, including his mistakes, including his failures, including the things he's done wrong. He's learned from that and he's bringing it the wisdom. Interesting. Yeah, sorry, this card was on the bottom of the deck. I've just been reshuffling, talking about him, but it's still coming through. We've got the energy of the warrior with him, but we've also got perfectionism and burnout. So he has to watch for that. Um, I mean, he said yesterday, one of the things, or, or the interview, not the interview, the speech, he was talking about the fact that Kamala won't do any live interviews and that this isn't democratic. You should, if you're running for presidency, and I believe this is true, you should be able to uh, be, you know, be interviewed and for it not to be overly scripted and um, just sit down and answer people's questions, you know, or answer journalists' questions. And uh, he was saying she's not doing that. And he said, I do 10 interviews a day. I thought, 10 interviews a day? He said, anybody that asks me, I'll, I'll do an interview with them. Um, 10 interviews a day is not sustainable. You know, it's, that is, um, I mean, that's dedication, yes, but, you know, remember the story his father gave him as well. It's it's to do with, uh, or what he was talking about, the, the stoicism thing, the one about pushing the rock up the hill, but eventually, if you're not careful, that rock will fall back on you. Just be careful, because... Um, 
he does look after himself but you know it's like anybody who passionately cares about something if you passionately care about something and, and you put everything into it he's putting everything into it just don't get burnt out is what i want to say don't get burnt out so if you were listening to me ever robert please make time for yourself don't see it as a day where you could have been campaigning or a day that you could have been doing an interview with whoever you will do a better interview the following week for having some time out so please do that with your wife your family go and with the falcons the wildlife go into nature uh, i'm sure he does do this but i just feel as though it's gonna it's increasingly gonna get mad and manic and uh the pace of it i'm talking about and he just needs to warriors know when to rest is what i'm hearing warriors know when to rest they know the pause between the different tunes maybe he does know but anyway right let's just pull a card for trump as well so let's have a look at the archetypal energy around donald trump today so we had the king yesterday albeit the king that needs to learn to listen to those who are trying to help him let's see what we get today We've got the sleeper, cause and effect and clarity. Right. I'll read what it says. It implies to me that there is a clouded, um, there's a lack of clarity because it doesn't, you know, it's a load of black clouds, basically. Let's just have a look at what it says about the sleeper. Um, just find it in the book. Okay. Locked away in the tower, the sleeper is fated not to live under the sun, but instead to embrace the shadows and live a life of clairvoyant dreams. While their sibling, the waker, holds the knowledge of the daytime world, I know what this is, I'll explain in a minute, the sleeper lives in a world of visions, untangling omens, yet blind to the truth of the true world. They speak only prophecies based on what they see in their dreams without ever having to face the repercussions. Past decisions that you have made are starting to have an effect and whether they were made for the right or wrong reasons, it's too late to change them now. It's hard to admit when you are at fault, so learn what you can from the situation. Next time you can make a better choice rather than repeating the same errors. This is the fact that Donald Trump, whether you like him or not, is a catalyst and he is there to, has been and it still is, one of the one of the pivotal people that is guiding America through its Pluto return energy. And you've still got a way to go with that, but it's about facing the shadows. And in particular, if you really can't stand him and you hate everything he stands for, everything he's done, he, he's bringing that up to be looked at because it's representative of something that's out there. Um, so that's one interpretation. I know lots of people do love him, but he, the other thing he's doing, of course, is he's exposing the shadows in the collective. You might think he's doing a great job of that. You might think that he's one of the swamp. I, I, to be honest, at this point, personally, I don't mind whatever you think, but I'm just trying to articulate what this card represents. He's there to show the shadow. He's there to expose the shadows. He's there to be a pivotal person at this moment of darkness in the USA, which you're always going to go through because you're going through a Pluto return. You know, it's not a period of sunshine and flowers and light, although, of course, there are those moments as well. So funny. I've got a computer here and it's now showing me pictures of flowers. So, of course, within the darkness, there is light and within the light, there is darkness. Um, he's showing the cause and effect and clarity he he's asking he's also asking people to um think for themselves uh again i saw an interview this is only this last couple of days i can't remember who it was it's some billionaire who recently met him who's always been very anti him um and he sat down with him for whatever reason and he did a interview and he's talking about the fact the gap between how he's portrayed without saying that some of the things he's done and said you know aren't great because some of the things have, have not been great so it's not like gaslighting and saying that he's this perfect saintly figure no he's just saying the gap between when you meet the actual man and how he's presented in the media there's a big gap and he actually said i've changed my mind having met him I've, it's like actually he seemed to be kind he seemed to have a good sense of humor he he was very present very articulate uh quite wise all the rest of it and he was really surprised by it so this is the thing um 
don't know why I mentioned that, but for whatever reason I needed to, uh, or somebody needed to hear it, maybe. This is the thing. It's, I think people, Trump is almost like a barometer. It's sort of the people who he's meant to, he's meant to show different reflections and different shadows. He's doing the job he came in to do. He's an extraordinary catalyst. Uh, he is an awakener. Um, and in a dualistic world, and I've said this so many times, in a dualistic world and on a dualistic planet, you are always going to have people that are bring in the light and bring in the dark. You can't not have that. So he's playing the role he's meant to play. And whatever you believe that role to be is your right to believe it. But interesting card that. Shall I pull one more? Because I did have um, two for RFK. So I've got the sleeper. I also feel I'm picking up here. There's an energy here of um, brooding. <laughs> he broods. He broods on things a little bit. Um, yeah, he's a brooder. So you think nothing's happening or you think he's forgotten something he's said he's going to do. He'll do it. Um, all right, what's that card that's just jumped out? We've got the Herald. Small regrets and longing. We've got the hair. I have no idea what that card's about. So let's see. The Herald. Interesting cards, aren't they? Here we go. The Herald. What's the camera? I can't find it. it. Took ages to find it. Um, the Herald, right. Uh, what is this about? So this is the second card for Trump. Nimble hands pluck at the strings of a lute and fragrant smoke curls from beneath the wide brim of a hat. The Herald exudes an easy sort of charm that draws others to them as they play their tune. But beneath the smile and easy laugh, there is an undercurrent of melancholy. They think back to the day that their life changed to the flowers on the hillsides, the hares in the grass, the guard wait, waiting in ambush. Would their fate have been different had they taken a different path back then? Or would they have turned out the same way? It's easy to get caught up in the what ifs, but if you go forward holding on to all of those little regrets, you're going to miss out on the pleasures of the moment. Be your own herald of change and bring something new and more positive into your life. Don't let the force of your own feelings separate you from finding joy in the path you're on now. It's really weird, but both of those cards for him today are quite melancholy and they're, they're about looking back. Um, I, I feel he has regrets about some of the things that, that he's done, maybe in his own life or maybe, you know, in his political career. Um He'll never probably admit. I, I just feel that, that that assassination attempt changed something within him, and I do think he is a more ref he he's more reflective. I've always said about Trump because the tarot card he gets all the time is the t the hermit, and I, I've often said, well, you know, is he reflecting and going within? Maybe he is more than we realise, but you're never going to know. You know, he's never going to show that. So um, it's a very reflective. Trump. And to be perfectly honest, for him to have accepted the hand of another alpha male like RFK, um, he, he, he's, RFK said he thought deeply and he prayed on it, whether it was the right thing to do. I think Trump actually, to be fair, also, it wasn't a rash decision at all. I think it was considered, it was reflected upon. And I think as in any type of unity situation, there has to be a give, bit of give and take on both sides. Um, so there are parts of RFK Jr. which Trump is like, what? You said that, you do that, you know, but equally there's respect as well. So there's a coming together. I must say at this point, as it just feels rather perfect, spirit gives symbols um, and spirit gives signs when you're tapped into a particular energy and they can be really random. So this thing about unity, because ultimately what I believe is happening with RFK Jr. and Trump is it's an olive branch into the future, actually. It's bigger than the presidential election. It's to do with a new way forward in politics. May very well be the formation of a new third party as well. That's a really important part of it. Um, but yeah, sort of the way, f the way forward, unity, coming together, two opposing sides coming together, uniting. Um, in the UK, I'm sure many of you have heard of the band Oasis, Liam Gallagher, Noel Gallagher, the Warring Brothers. 
the brothers who haven't been able to get onto a stage with each other for decades because they can't stand the sight of each other. There's jealousy, there's ego, there's whatever there is, I don't know. But one of the best bands of the last few decades, Oasis, Don't Look Back in Anger, brilliant. I love all of their songs, actually. They're great. Champagne Supernova, I might go and play a bit in a minute. Um, but the point is, they've just announced a reunion tour. And it is literally like, wow, if those two brothers can reunite, and people are already saying, if they can stay civil for a whole year, before the gigs, before the big stage events, it'll be a bloody miracle. But equally, there's something in that. You know, if you can stay, if you, if they can stay the course, the intention is there for the warring brothers to come back together. Um, the symbolism in that, my friends, as is. I know you're going to think I'm. I was going to say quackers, but that's quite funny that I say that in relation to what I'm about to show you. Um, you know what I'm about to say if you follow me on. Uh, Instagram. So the day after I'd been so inspired by this speech with RFK Jr., I went to cook my normal breakfast. I always have eggs every morning. And I've been having eggs every morning now for God knows how many months. So I've cracked a lot of eggs into a bowl. The morning after the speech, I crack an egg. Du, du, du. I get a double yolk. I get a double yolk. <laughs> that wasn't actually my particular egg. It's just a picture of a double, a double yolk. But the symbolism of that, two, two yolks in the same egg, two peas in the same pod. But I'm also showing the vesica Pisces symbol, the vesica Pisces symbol, the two joining together to make the third, the third energy. It's all going on. If you've got eyes that are open to actually what's really going on, which really to me feels it's, it's almost like above politics. I know that's easy for me to say sitting here in the UK, but we will be affected by whoever gets into power as well, you know, come November. But, you know, I'm into the symbols and the energies more than anything. Oh, let's do a Camelot card now. So um, let's stick with RFK Jr. And let's give, let's ask about him and let's just see what wants to come through. This is the Wisdom of Avalon Oracle cards. Thank you for watching. If you're watching this on Bank Holiday Mo Monday, thank you very much. I'm recording this on Bank Holiday Monday. Did I say what today's date is? Today's date is the, um, what is it? It's the 26th of August and it's 11.11 .11 in the morning here. Bank holiday Monday. So I do appreciate those of you that watch me. Very happy. Lots of new people are finding me who like the depth. I don't really do sound bites. I do put up little short videos occasionally and I try to do that from the longer videos. So... But thank you for watching the, the nuance that you get from longer videos and the depth. I think these are the days that we need that. Okay, RFK Jr., what is there to say, please, Spirit? We've got Perception. That's an interesting card, actually. It's the forest, but it's, the, it's finding your way through the forest to the light. Finding your way through the forest to the light. He's leading us out. He's attempting to lead us out of the darkness to somewhere brighter. There's a brighter horizon at the end of the forest. There's a pathway there. But right now, it's quite... This is a darker part of the forest before it gets a lot lighter. It's a lot lighter up here. It's a lot easier. Um, there is that saying, isn't there? Can't see the wood for the trees. I don't think that's him. I think he, oh, okay, thank you, Spirit. What I'm being shown is he is there. He's in this lighter part of the forest. He knows why he's done what he's done, why he's aligned with Trump, why he's still staying on the ballot in 30 states. He hasn't dropped out of the race. He's staying on the ballot in 30 states, I believe. The 10 states where it, his vote or vote, votes for him would have caused a democratic win he's pulling out so he's staying on the ballot though in the other 30 states so he hasn't pulled out the race he knows what he's doing he, it's like very strategic he's here and a lot of other people are here in this dark part of the wood and they're like what the hell is he doing and you know, what's he doing that for you know and throwing their arms up in horror you know in terms of you're not the man i thought you were and um you know, you've betrayed my trust and all of that. No, he hasn't. He's ahead of the game. He's ahead of the game. 
Um, I used to have a card that was sitting on my desk for weeks. I've put it back recently, but it said something along the lines of keep going um, because you can see where you're going, even though nobody else understands what you're trying to do. Something along like those lines. That's what it is. It's very Robin Hood energy as well um, with him. OK, let's pull two more cards from this deck. RFK Jr. We've got the deer. OK, gentleness and diplomacy. That was on the bottom of the date. Bottle of the, bottle of the deck before. Um, the deer, gentleness and diplomacy. Yeah, he's a diplomat. He's a diplomat. I don't think Trump is a diplomat. Well, I don't know. Not so much. Some of you are going to have a go at me for that. But my John summed it up very well. We were talking about this a few days ago and I was saying what had happened. And then I was watching it live, the speech. And I said to John, I said, you really need to start watching this. And he was like, oh. I said, no, no, watch it. And he was captivated as well. And then afterwards, uh, I said, what do you think? He said, I think RFK Jr. will be the balance that Trump needs to stop him maybe going too far or balancing him out in some way. So here we've got the deer, gentleness and diplomacy. He'll also bring that out of Trump, is what I'm hearing. Uh, one more card, RFK Jr. And then we'll pull a couple for Trump as well. RFK Jr. Anything else to... Oops. We've got the dragon. We've got the eagle. I'll take the eagle because he loves his birds. But um, the eagle is about spirit, integrity and connection to the angelic realm. But we've got the dragon. So he's got dragon strength. Interesting. That's a really lovely combination of energies, actually, because dragon strength is, you know, it's that masculine energy. Um, oh, it's the dragon, basically. It's power. And then the deer is almost like the total opposite. It's like the lion and the lamb. That's the energy of the lion and the lamb as well. Uh, with regards to the Bible, it's the lion and the lamb and the lion and the lamb need to learn to lie down together. And I feel as though he's got these two aspects to his personality. And when he was younger, it was more the dragon energy, but he's moving more into this sort of diplomat, this gentler, more feminine energy, actually. Um, he's managed to embrace that and weave the two together. And I think he will bring out those qualities with people around him. He's going to need to with Trump and Vance, to be honest, because I just see them on a stage, the three of them. It's just like, bloody hell, it's like, bloody, that is just, it's like the alpha male. It's like testosterone city. It's like, come on, where are the women? You know, let's soften it a bit. But he does have that feminine energy within him as well. Um, I've got that song in my head. Let's hear it for, let's hear it for the girls. Let me just find what the lyrics are. Let's hear it for the, is it? Let's hear it for the... Let's hear it. Oh, let's hear it for the boy. No, it's let's hear it for the boy. A song by Denise Williams. I'm hearing that now. For whatever reason. I won't play it. I won't play it, otherwise I'll get. <sighs> let's hear it for the boy. <laughs> I won't sing it. Let's hear it for the boy. Let's give the boy a hand. Let's hear it for my baby. You know you've got to understand. Yeah, I mean, it's a love song, I know, but... I think it's just let's hear it for the boy. Let's hear it for RFK. As I feel as like that's what um, Spirit is saying. We've got the wasp on the bottom of the deck. This is the people that are out to get get a, get him, basically. This is the wasp energy. This is anger, retaliation and jealousy. And I hate to say it, but this is also some of his family. Um, to that, I want to say, remember what family actually should be. OK, um, family is about not always agreeing. Family is about allowing freedom to be different, to grow within within the same nest, but to be different. But there's some there's some very poisonous wasps out there wanting to get him. But he knows that. So, again, just bring the um, bring the protection energy around him. Uh, let's end with a few cards with regards to chances come November. Uh, or show me his energy come the election. We've got the Queen. Yeah, I keep getting this, again, this feminine energy and the Lady of the Lake. Who are these women? The Queen and the Lady of the Lake. I'm hearing the power behind the throne. So I know he's married. Maybe it's his wife. Um, powerful women behind the scenes helping him is what I want to say. And some of them are hidden. 
So it's not just his wife. Some of them are hidden. I feel actually his um, uh, running mate, Nicole, is she called Nicole? I think she might be one of them, even though I think she was, wasn't that keen on him standing. But I think she believes in him. She believes in him. She believes in what they were trying to do. And she and she's big enough she's a big enough person to be able to see above the party politics to the fact that this is what we were campaigning on. This is the greatest chance in a generation for us to be able to bring some difference. I'm going to continue to help I think she'll still continue to help him basically. Um Is his mother still alive? Let me just have a look. Picking up his mother. Uh, I, I know some of you already know the answer to this, but I don't. So RFK Jr. mother. Uh, who's Ethel Kennedy? Picking her up. Oh, is she one of the people that's come out and... Is she one of the people that's come out and... Uh, Oh no, is she dead? Hold on. Ethel Kennedy is an American human rights advocate. Okay. She's 96. Um... Hold on, Ethel Kennedy. I want to see if she's one of the ones that have said about him. Has she turned on him? Ethel Kennedy celebrates her 96th birthday surrounded by her family. That was 12th of April. RFK Jr.'s mother, Ethel, was behind Kennedy clan's humiliating endorsement of Joe Biden as whatever. Okay. Hmm, that's sad, isn't it? Hmm. Well, it's not her then. I'm hearing she should love her son more than she loves politics. Got the chariot card. Yeah, he's got a lot of... Yeah, the Empress. That's the mother. The Empress, the Chariot and the Two of Swords. She's at a crossroads moment. Well, if she's still here, I just hope that she can build a bridge with him because that would be sad, wouldn't it, for uh, politics to usurp uh, the love of a child. So I'm sure he still loves her, but anyway... Right, let's move off that because that's sort of more personal stuff, really, um, that's between them, isn't it? And what shall I do to end this session? Uh, I think what I'll do to end this session is I'm going to... What am I going to do? What haven't I done? Let me just take stock. Hold on, guys. Um, for the election, for this new alliance as I say this is remember the motor race this can change let's just see where we are today we've got the um we've got the hierophant and the chariot um the hierophant is the energy of um go well government we've got the hanged man we've got the king of swords they're quite good cards to be perfectly honest um King of Swords, Hanged Man, Chariot, Hierophant. Remember, this whole reading really has more been the focus on Robert. I, I think he is causing people to have a change of mind about the King of Swords. I think that's probably Trump. I think he's I think he's going to flip votes basically. I think he's going to flip votes. Um as it stands today, as I'm reading it today, it looks quite positive for a potential win. But as I say, don't rule the opposing team out of the race because the race ain't over yet and there's a lot of twists and turns to come. 
a lot of twists and turns to come. That's just as it is today. OK, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much. Um, it's a nice sunny day here, so I think I'll get out for a walk because it's a bank holiday. Uh, thank you for watching. Please give it a like. Get this video out there if you found it at all helpful. And um, more than anything, let's remember that really the whole point of Robert's move has been about being about trying to bring unity, um, reaching out across party to all parties, uh, going where he was acknowledged and listened to. Um, but I'm sure he's probably got open, you know, open ears, open heart to anybody that really wishes to be part of the movement towards better health for children, keeping freedom of speech alive and ending war. And those are big things that we should be able to agree on. So let's keep it civil and respect each other. And as he said himself, we should love our children more than we hate each other. Thanks very much, everybody. Take care. Lots of love. Bye-bye for now. Bye.